In less than a week, container freight rates registered one record high after the other, with new data showing another massive spike on the key Asia to US routes. Many companies have been struggling with the relentless rise in freight rates, shipping delays, and low container availability, which are all contributing to shortages of a wide range of products and acute consumer price increases. Freightos recently released a report indicating that rates from Asia to the U.S. East Coast topped the previous record of $20,000 and hit $22,000 yesterday, marking a 210% increase from last year's rates. Before the onset of the health crisis, rates on this route were below $3,000. Up until this point, the most cited reason why freight prices are trending so high was an unexpected rebound in consumer demand in the second half of 2020, especially for goods made in China and Asia for delivery in the United States. The intensification of the online shopping trend has also fueled demand for overseas products. But manufacturers and retailers were caught by surprise as they've predicted consumer spending would collapse due to the aggravation of the global economic recession. With government stimulus checks on their hands, consumers spent money like never before. On the other hand, shipping companies have been unable to meet this inexorable uptick in demand with the Texas storms and the blockage of the Suez Canal for almost a week adding to the chaos. As we reported in yesterday's video, most recently, a new wave of lockdowns in Asia has added even more pressure to the global shipping crisis. And now that the Christmas and Thanksgiving seasons are approaching, demand for shipping is expected to stay strong. In a statement on its website, Freitas said, Freight is really expensive, but with close to no capacity, many importers and exporters are willing to pay premiums in addition to these rates just to keep their goods moving. And with high consumer demand and still lacking inventory levels, prices are not gonna let up anytime soon. The price of fuel, the container shortage and labor shortages in ports are also contributing to further increases in freight rates. The Valencia Containerized Freight Index, VCFI, showed that maritime transport prices grew by 9.19% in July, currently standing at 427.43 points. That's the highest figure ever recorded. At key points of the global supply chain, raw material shortages and facility closures are making retailers experience shortage of products and parts and prolonged shipping delays as they brace for the busy holiday season. Last year, retailers reduced their buying amid mass store closures, bankruptcies, and layoffs. Shipping companies responded by taking some capacity out of play by putting several container ships to maintenance. So when U.S. consumers started to order exported goods, the rapid surge in demand happened way before shippers and carriers were ready for it. Now, Retailers' choices are extremely limited, and they range from financially painful to completely excruciating. You can pay or you can wait, explained Chris Considine, the director in Alex Partners Retail Practice in an interview. Those are your options, he said. That is to say, retailers either have to sacrifice their already small profit margins to fork out money to pay astronomical freight prices or face huge shipping delays of goods. And the skyrocketing rates do not mean they will get their products on schedule. The American Apparel and Footwear Association president and CEO Steve Lamar described the current disruptions as an acute shipping crisis and a dire situation that is boosting inflation. B. Riley Securities analyst Susan Anderson recently said in a research note that freight prices were the biggest risk to most U.S. companies. Anderson estimates that companies were spending 50 to 100% more in freight compared to last year, 
and that current freight rates were hitting profit margins to the tune of 60 to 125 basis points. The shipping bottleneck is forcing retailers to hike consumer prices so that they can afford transportation costs and ensure the arrival of products for their shelves. As the CEO of apparel chain Basic Fun pointed out, this is one of those years where, for some companies, business can be so good, it's bad. However, according to supply chain liner giant Mesk, the latest increases in shipping rates cannot be justified by an uprising consumer demand. In a detailed report, the company described that shippers and carriers are not unfamiliar with rising consumer demand, and before the health crisis struck, shipping companies were perfectly able to adapt to changing patterns, solve crises, and find resilience. What is happening right now is totally unprecedented but not mainly caused by the effects of the virus health crisis and shifting consumer trends. A labor shortage at ports is creating a huge backlog of containers in many key spots, and this congestion is worsening the container shortage. The demand boom was just one of the catalysts, but not the most important. Shippers and carriers just realized how essential their service is at a time that global cargo demand is fast growing, and now they've become aware that businesses are willing to pay premium rates, shipping costs may have changed forever. Mesk showed on its quarterly performance report that overall container shipping demand was up only 2.7% in the second quarter as compared to the same period two years ago prior to the global health outbreak, and yet Mesk's average freight rate was $3,038 per 40-foot equivalent unit FEU. That's an increase of 63% from $1,868 per FEU from the same period in 2019. Moreover, the Drury World Container Index of spot rates hit $9,371 per FEU this week. 6.7 times what it was two years ago. In an interview with American shipper, consultant Lars Jensen, CEO of Vespucci Maritime, exposed that global demand for the first part of the year is up around 4% compared to 2019. We did not have a capacity problem in 2019. We had enough ships, we had enough containers, ports were fine, and trucks and rail were fine, at least from a global perspective, he said. Adding that, with 4% global demand growth since then, we should not have a problem now. You have some skewing because of the demand boom in North America, but none of this is down to a global demand boom because that doesn't exist. The problem right now is predominantly one of capacity. In essence, port congestion is what's actually curtailing effective ocean freight capacity with equipment stuck both on land and at sea. In fact, last week, Maersk published a customer advisory titled, Critical Help Needed, Congestion Increasing. The advisory purged U.S. companies to return shipping containers more quickly, stating, we do not anticipate the congestion decreasing anytime soon. On the contrary, the industry overall is forecasting higher U.S. volumes into early 2022 and beyond. Maersk highlighted that its own effective fleet capacity was reduced compared to pre-outbreak levels due to congestion. Vincent Clerk, executive vice president of Mesk, outlined on a recent conference call, saying, Our fleet has grown by 2% from 2019, but our volumes are down by 3%. It basically takes more TEUs, their 20-foot units of fleet capacity, to transport each FFE, which is a 40-foot box load of cargo. That will go away when congestion goes away. Alpha Liner also reported this week that carriers need much more tonnage as ships get stuck in congested ports in both the US and Asia. Some carriers reported they needed at least 20 to 25% more fleet capacity in the Trans-Pacific to continue carrying the same amount of cargo. 
With the reopening of the U.S. economy, demand isn't expected to fall any further this year. And while you can certainly shift vessels and containers from one trade to another, you cannot shift ports from one trade to another. It also doesn't do you any good to have plenty of trucks in another country if the trucks are needed in the United States. The same with rail, Jensen explained. He stressed that congestion problems just keep on coming, one domino after the other, from the massive backlog in California ports to the closure of the port in Yantian, China, the next imminent threat is the fast spread of the Delta variant in China. On top of that, you've had every conceivable little operational mishap, Jensen continued. You always have some vessel breaking down somewhere. Normally, if that happens, you charter a replacement vessel or shift the cargo to another service. But now, there are no vessels left to charter. Shifting the cargo to another service is out of the question. They're already all booked. So every tiny operational mishap adds more cargo to the pile of cargo you simply can't move. And things are just getting worse. Port congestion is expected to start showing signs of improvement next year, but only if more effective capacity is added to meet demand growth. However, when that eventually occurs, shipping rates might already have been consolidated at historically high prices. According to Jensen, as for freight costs, companies will just have to get used to them. They may pull back at some point, but not to levels they once were. Jensen predicts that freight rates will come down from where they are today, but they're not going back to anywhere near where they were pre-virus outbreak. They will definitely tumble compared to where they are now, but it will still represent a sizable increase compared to where they came from. With no end in sight for port congestions, the bottlenecks are likely to continue for the foreseeable future, and any expectations that inflation would be temporary are going to be crushed by the persistent and acute price increases all over the economy. When the masses start to realize that the economic collapse is far from over, and when the slump starts showing its ravaging effects, it's safe to say that it will be far too late to reverse this crisis. Thank you for watching today's video. We look forward to reading your comments under this video.